West Coast is an interesting beast, and and people that you talk to who work there, you know, I mean, depending on who you talk to and what period of their life you talk to them, and all have different opinions. But, um, you know, one of the things that constantly comes up is like it's a very fast paced, like work heavy tense kind of environment that's that's a vibe i get a lot was that kind of your experience or did you feel like it was not so much of like a like did it feel like it was a a rough period of time or did oh it was awful i hated it i hated my time there uh i was miserable even in the moment even when i'm kind of like so close to it and kind of have the blinders on i was very conscious of of how miserable i was uh they they really were working us to death you know um and and it was even explicitly said to the staff things like you're not doing ministry till you've passed 40 hours a week and so like they expected you like 40 hours a week what they're paying you for it's your bare minimum is yeah. the bare minimum and you know you should really be doing double like double that if you're truly serving the lord so yeah that it was an, an a very intense environment and that came straight from the top you know paul chapel's just an intense dude He's uh he's very domineering, very intimidating. You know, I still remember being in those Friday staff meetings and everybody's, you know, there's a buzz in the crowd as everybody's talking and then the doors fly open and here comes Paul, like he's the freaking president of the United States and a hush falls over the crowd, you know, because there's the man of God. And, you know, sometimes he was just in a mood and he would rip us. You know, and and he would tell us on a regular basis stuff like, until each of you wins 10 tithing members, 10 tithing families, you are a liability and not an asset to this ministry, you know? And so it was an interesting, like, wow, what an interesting way to look at the church members, you know, basically as a form of revenue, which of course they are in practical terms. But it was just like that. That was the emphasis. It's like not that's ten souls. It's ten tithing members. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was an intense environment. And uh, you know, I had I had a few run-ins uh, that kind of soured soured me to to West Coast and to particularly to uh, to Lancaster Baptist. You know, I, I th- maybe he he was well intentioned. I but I think that Paul Chapel wanted to crack the whip on me. He really wanted to, you know, whip me into shape. And, you know, man, my very first week on staff, I thought I had arrived because, you know, I spent the time in Bible college thinking like going on staff at at Lancaster Baptist is the pinnacle of ministry. And here I had been asked to be on staff and I was like, man, I've arrived. So I'm in my classroom and uh, teach, teach my very first week of, of school and, if you back up two weeks before that, me and this guy named Bo Johnson had made this music video. He he made up this silly song about basically asking, trying to trying to date in Bible college, and uh, we made this music video that this is before Facebook really. It kind of went viral just by students on campus sharing it like by USB drive, and so this this video spread like wildfire, and it was really funny. And and totally tame, but the music director there, Les Wall, uh, super conservative dude, he was not happy when he when he saw that video. And so what what happened? Long story short, was he phoned up Paul Chapel and was like, "Hey, one of your staff members has made this music video that's like sensual and all this kind of stuff." And so Paul Chapel uh, told. Brother Weaver, who is the dean of men, he's like, tell Andrew that he needs to write me a letter detailing detailing all the reasons he should remain on staff. This is my first week there. And come to find out later, he hadn't even seen the video yet. So I am I'm like in my classroom writing out this letter with tears in my eyes because I'm like, I've already blown this opportunity. One of the most humiliating moments of my life. And uh, I go and I, I hand the letter to Paul Chapel, and, you know, he graciously allows me to stay on staff. And then I find out later from Larry that he actually saw the video later and loved it and thought it was hilarious. But I never received any a kind of apology back for that. And Bo was made to stand up in front of 800 uh, fellow college students and, and make a big apology as well. So there was this kind of like real strong arming going on, you know, 
uh, public shaming. And I was a part of that. You know, that was one example, but there was, you know, other examples as well. I won't go into all the details, but yeah, stuff like that really did sour my, my taste for it. It doesn't seem like the sexual abuse was as rampant there as it is in like a Hiles or a Golden State. And I always just ponder, I'm like, is it because they're better at <laughs> sweeping that stuff under the rug or is it because it didn't happen? Did you get any sense of that while you were there at all? I didn't. Okay. The, you know, there were other kind of little bit shady things that I, right. I was witness to, but I was not uh, privy to any kind of sexual abuse that okay. I can recall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just they, always curious. Yeah. They had their own skeletons. Right. Over there. You know, Care there was the whole. Expand on that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's the whole Whitman thing. Mm-hmm. You know, are you familiar with that that story? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've never gotten into it on the show. Like, I, it definitely comes up in the group because that is one of the weird that Mike Zachary and like one or two other things come up a lot, and they all are pretty interesting. But my connection with the Whitman thing is his brother actually attended my church growing up and, um, and was married to my pastor's daughter. And so like, I knew that family very well. Um, not Jeremy, but I knew his brother and, you know, his wife and, you know, his, uh, his cousin and stuff would come to the church and stuff like that. So like, but yeah, I remember when that story happened, seeing in real time, like, the statement go up, the statement come down, the statement change, the statement go back mm-hmm. up. Yeah. And it was one of the first times out of West Coast where I was like, did they just did they just alter what they released about the situation? And um but anyway, I'll I'll let you talk about it. But that was one of the things where it was like and it's another one of those uncomfortable ones to like really dive into because it's like I know people connected and it is at the end of the day there's a very tragic element to that story. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's one of those, what benefit does it bring to, to dig too much into it? Because I, I think at the end of the day, we're never going to know, you know what I mean? Like what really happened? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a lot of salacious details that I can share. Um, d- just in summary, you know, I was disappointed with the way that it was portrayed to the public yeah. because, you know, having been on staff and having been close with the chapel family, I knew just just how integral Jeremy Whitman was to that ministry. I I mean, he was at the chapel's house nearly every day. You know, he was waiting hand and foot on them. He he was a good personal assistant, but but the vibe that they were putting out was like, you know, this guy didn't, he wasn't really involved. He was not a staff member or wasn't, you know, on the pastoral staff or whatever, but it's like he totally was. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely some kind of like, uh, you know, mm. A little bit of deceitfulness. Yeah. Well, I remember when that news broke. Um, and like, I just remember reading the article and then reading the statement. I was like, he's in all of their youth conference videos. He's like front and center of all this stuff. And then on top of that, it was like, you know, stuff fundies like, which, you know, they, they released like the staff manual, which had him listed as associate pastor, you know, that same year. But it was just one of those things where it was like, and, and that's what happened with Zachary too. There was a statement and then it was like kind of weird. And then like they pulled it down, Golden State put one up and put it down. And then the both of them put the same one that corresponded out together. It was just really weird. But like, that's the, that's the thing with, and I, I want to go back to this because this is kind of all ties together is like, when you talk about chapel, the vibe that I get, and I talk with people about this sometimes is like, he is one of those guys who would have easily made it in corporate America. Like if he had done, if he wanted to build a fortune 500 company, he definitely could have. Yeah. Um, But with West coast, you know, I think I wish he had, by the way, I wish that's what he had done. Well, he kind of did just build a big business out in the the desert, but it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like West coast is kind of safe from a lot of the sexual abuse stuff because of, like how big of an adverse effect that would have on the ministry. You know what I mean? Like it feels like West coast more than Hiles. Cause like Hiles just earnestly does like really bad stuff. I feel like <laughs> West coast. Yeah. It's keeping the brand alive. Like we are this very tight ship. And um, anyway, I, I was just curious about it because I haven't heard from anybody, which makes me happy that that's not, but I'm always curious to know, like if, I'm missing something because they seem to be like one of the few IFB colleges that doesn't have this long laundry list of like abuse cases under it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll give them credit for 